Right. Well, I'll quickly go through a few uh, stoichiometry problems here. It won't take too long. So the first thing in stoichiometry is working out the percentage of each element or a certain element in a compound. So here they've asked you, what is the percentage of calcium? What is the percentage of oxygen and calcium oxide, CaO? Now the first thing you must do is work out the relative molecular mass of CaO. So you look at your periodic table, you've got one calcium, so relative molecular mass, that's 40. And you've one oxygen, oh, 16. When you add them two together, you get your 56. Therefore, to work out the percentage of calcium, it's the mass of calcium, 40, over the 56, your total relative molecular mass, and to make anything percent, times it by 100. And you throw that in your calculator. And you get 71.43%. If I wanted the percentage of oxygen, be the set for each element, Give your cell more space than this anyway. 16, the mass of oxygen, over the total mass, to make anything a percent, times it by 100. Now it should be, what, 28.57, if you take them two away. The total percentage is obviously 100, so 28.57% oxygen. Next one, find the percentage of iron and iron oxide, Fe2O3. So again, Work out the total relative molecular mass of this. So there's two irons, two by 56, and there's three oxygens. Three by 16, 48, and you have 160. And then the percentage of iron, so don't just put 56 over it, because there's two irons. So it's 112 over the total mass, 160, to make it a thing of percent, times it by 100. you get 70%. That means there must be 30% oxygen. If you wanted to check, 48 over 160, and then we see our 30%. Here we're seeing how much water is in hydrated copper sulfate. So there's a bit more work working out the relative molecular mass. It's a shorter space, I'll write it in up here. So copper, like chlorine, keep in your halves, one by 63.5, sulfur, 32, oxygen, 4 by 16, and then water has a mass of 18, you will get used to that, if you're unsure it's 2 times 1, because there's two hydrogens, and 1 by 16 is 16, and then there's 5 of those waters, 5, 18, 50, 90, and then you add up all those, Two four nine point five is your relative molecular mass. They want the percentage of water in this, so we have ninety out of that total mass of two four nine point five to make anything a percent times it by a hundred. So ninety, and we have thirty six point zero seven percent. If they don't tell you what percentage or how many decimal points, give it the two decimal points bang on. Last one here, percentage of nitrogen in this. Just be careful, there's two nitrogens here. So you've got ammonium sulfate. So probably the best, treat them individually. So 2 by 14, that's 28, that's how many nitrogens there. So there's 4 and 2, there's 8 uh, hydrogens, 1 sulfur, and four oxygens. Tally those up. 64 plus 32 plus 8 plus 28. And you get 132. And then for the percentage of nitrogen in it, again there's two nitrogens, so it's 28 over the total. It's 132. So again, I think a percent times it by a hundred. And we have 21.21%. Right, next thing then is looking at the empirical formula. So the empirical formula, you need to know the definition of empirical formula, molecular formula, and structural formula. So the empirical formula is simply the simplest whole number ratio in which atoms of the elements are present. So it indicates what elements are present and the simplest whole number ratio. 
So here are eight time, that's the molecular formula, indicating the actual number of atoms present, two carbons, two hydrogens. You know, that's the structural formula, the molecular formula, and then the empirical formula here. It's the simplest whole number ratio. <coughs> so what you're trying to do is get a factor of two and two, obviously it is two. And then how many times does two go into two? It goes once. Two into two goes once. It looks a wee bit strange writing it like that. So generally you just write it like that. That's the empirical formula. Simplest whole number ratio. <coughs> CH. Here again, C2H6, ethane, um, is a molecular formula. You'll see there it's two carbons. Don't worry if you haven't done organic chemistry yet. And six mm -hmm. hydrogen. So we get that. Um, so that's our structural formula indicating the arrangement of atoms, molecular formula indicating the actual number of atoms present, and then the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio. So the common factor that they have there, the highest common factor is two. How many times does two go into two? Once, two into six, three times. Again, it looks a wee bit strange. That's the one, so CH3 is the empirical formula. The two molecular formulas here, the highest common factor is 6. So how many times does 6 go into 6? Once. 6 into 12, twice. 6 into 6, once. And then, again, I don't really like the look of that, so CH2O. Say if we, well, if we didn't get the highest common factor first of all, say if we said 2 goes into it, and say C3H6O2, oh, 2 goes into it, sorry. O3, and then we can see that 3 goes into this CH2O. So you come upon the same answer anyway. So don't be stressing yourself about that. Just keep simplifying it down. Um, this one here, 2 goes into it. How many times does 2 go into 4? Twice. 2 into that goes 4 times. 2 into 2 once. Water, H2O. That's the molecular formula. 1 goes into it. And how many times does 1 go into 2? It's the same. H2. So the molecular formula and the empirical formula are both the same. Just to be for you. Um, this here, last one, then hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Common factor is 2. How many times is 2 going to 2? goes once. 2 into 2 goes once. I don't like to look at that, so oh, we'll do there. So there, no, that's the molecular formula indicating the actual number of atoms present. Well, there's your empirical formula. Simplest whole number ratio, how much they're present. Do a few V1s looking at moles now. Thing that we always go back to in chemistry from percentages present. So they give you a me question here. A compound contains 75% carbon and 25% hydrogen. What is its empirical formula? So what I do is I treat it as if it's 100 grams. Of those 100 grams, 75% of it is carbon. So of those 100 grams, 75 grams of carbon and 25 grams are hydrogen. The beauty of going back to grams is you can work out the number of moles. Using the bit in your mole triangle, mass in grams to moles, you divide by the relative molecular mass. Yeah, so we'll work out the number of moles of carbon. So the mass in grams of carbon is 75. Just change that percentage to a gram. Divide by the relative molecular mass. The mass number of carbon is 12. And you just throw that in your calculator. And you get 6.25. 6.25 moles. Now work out the number of moles of hydrogen. So the mass in grams here. You have 25 grams, 25%. Remember, just change that percentage sign to grams. Divide by the relative molecular mass. So the mass number is 1. You get 25 moles. Now we're never going to write C6.25H25 because it says the simplest whole number ratio. So what you do is you get the common factor of them and just out of practice divide by the smaller number.
smaller number here, 6.25. So we divide both of them by the smallest number, 6.25 divided by 6.25 is 1, 25 divided by 6.25 is 4. So your empirical formula. How many carbons is 1? How many hydrogens? 4. CH4. You know, so they divide both sides by the common factor, i.e. the smallest number. Another way you want to simplify it down, giving you the percentages. There's the percentages. Change the percentage sign to a gram and find the number of moles of each. I don't need to do it in much detail. So the number of moles of carbon. 68.85 grams. That's actually a, a difficult wee one. Divide by the relative molecular mass, which is 12. So let's get it all teed up. Number of moles of hydrogen. Change the percentage and the grams. 4.92 grams divided by the mass number. And the number of moles of oxygen. 26.23 grams divided by 16. Now throw this in your calculator to get the number of moles of each. 68. 5.74 say. And 26.23 divided by 16. 1.64. Now again, you're never going to write C 5.74. H 4.92. And O 1.64. It's not right. The simplest whole number ratio is the empirical formula. So what you do is divide by the smallest number. So here in this case it's 1.64. That's 1. 4.92 divided by that gives us 3. 5.74 gives us 3.5. Now again that's not right. You don't have C 3.5 H 3.01. Oh, because that's not whole number ratio. And it's too big to round up or round down. So what you do is, in order to get this up to a whole number, we double it. We don't just double it, we have to double it all. So if it was 3.33, we treble it, bring it up to a nearest whole number. So we double everything there, and we get 7, 6, and 2. Therefore, the empirical formula, C7, H6, O2. So you multiply everything by 2, because if you look at your definition of the empirical formula, it's the simplest whole number ratio. Two more for you, and then I'll stop it. An oxide of carbon contains 27% carbon. So an oxide of carbon means it contains oxygen in it. So if there's 27% carbon, how would you work out the percentage of oxygen? We take 27 away from 100. And you see that there's 73% oxygen. So get the number of moles of each. Number of moles of carbon is 27. Change that percentage into a gram and divide by its mass number, 12. Work out the number of moles of oxygen. Change the percentage into a gram, 73 grams. Divided by its mass, number of oxygen is 16. So, 27 divided by 12, 9 over 4, 2.25 moles. 73 divided by 16, oh, yes, 4.5625. Again, they're not whole numbers, divide by the smaller one. That way you'll always get a 1 in it. 2.03. Now, that's 2.03. You could take it as your 2. You know, so there's a wee thing for you. When you see it's 2.03, there, just take it as your 2. Therefore, the empirical formula here is 1 carbon, 2 oxygens, is carbon dioxide, CO2. <sighs> this one here, again, percentages change to grams. We change this for sulfur. So, Work out the number of moles of sulfur. So 23.7 grams divided by its mass number is 32. Number of moles of oxygen. 23.7 grams divided by its mass number is 16. 
and the number of moles. Oh jeez, one of these is for Anne, really. Let me look at the press. Chlorine, that's chlorine, see so yeah. And the number of moles of chlorine. 52.6, and for chlorine, like copper, keep in your half. So 35.5. I'll test you to see if you are watching this. Bloody thing. 23.7 divided by 32. Oh. 0 0.74. 1 if you like. 23 point. They don't have to be exactly the same. 1.48. And 52.6 divided by 35.5. 1.48 as well. Now we see they're going to be the same. So in the same ratio. Divide by the smallest, there's my smallest number. And say that will go in twice. 1.999, yeah, there's my two, there's my two, there's my one. So the empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio, O2, Cl2. And one last one for the rob. I'm just going to try a few. This one here, because you're looking at the percentage hydration and magnesium sulfate, maybe, or something like that. So, again, they give you the percentages. This time we're treating water as a compound. So work out the number of moles of each. So the number of moles of magnesium. Change the percentage sign to a gram. 9.8 grams divided by the relative molecular mass, 24. Number of moles of sulfur. 13 grams divided by 52, the relative molecular mass, so the mass number should be same. Number of moles of oxygen, 26 divided by the mass number, 16. And then the number of moles of water. And here, treating it all as one. Remember the relative molecular mass of this, two by one is two, in your hydrogens, and one by 16, 16. So the mass number is 18. That should be in your head anyway. 51.2 grams, divide that by 18. Right, throw these in, 9.8, divide that by 24, 0 0.408, or 41. 13 divided by 32, 0 0.406. We'll treat them as the same, so that's one is to one. 13 over eight, 1.625. And then 51.2, divide that by 18, 2.84. Now divide by the smallest. So you can divide by 0 0.41, if you like. So we start with this one here, divide by 0 0.406. Seven. 0.625 4. So very good, like oops, zeros after. So that means I've got one magnesium, one sulfur, four oxygens, that is magnesium sulfate, and then this is what you like here, hydrated, stuck at the end, seven waters, seven H2O. Perfect. You practice these now for yourselves, go over them again.